Is he proposing? Oh my gosh, I have chills right now. To end the To All The Boys franchise with a proposal, a wedding, love to see it. I, a girl can dream, right? Hey guys, it's Kelsey. Welcome back to another Caught Up With Kelsey. Get on the couch and get comfy because we're about to get into it. Happy birthday! Not my birthday. Tomorrow! It's not tomorrow. On Monday! Good to know you know what my birthday is. <laughs> Let's uh, restart that. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. We have a lot to discuss today. So as I said, get on the couch, get on you know, a chair, get on your bed wherever you feel comfortable, because we're about to get into it. Okay, so the first story I have to talk about today that could not wait and made number one story of the week is the whole Olivia Rodrigo, Joshua Bassett, and Sabrina Carpenter drama. So basically, the two leads of Disney Plus's High School Musical, The Musical, were caught in some drama. I shouldn't even say some. There was like a whole bunch of drama. Over last weekend when Olivia Rodrigo, who plays Nina slash Nini in the show, released her new song, Driver's License. And honestly, if you haven't heard the song yet, what are you doing with your life? Go listen now, because it is an absolute bop. Anyways, Olivia and her on-screen romantic interest, Ricky, who is played by Joshua Bassett, sparked real life dating rumors in the past, but fans speculated that the relationship ended in August of last year after Olivia mentioned a quote unquote failed relationship on TikTok. She also posted on her Instagram a picture of her and like a friend on the beach with shirts that said dump him. Olivia kind of just gave us all the signs that there was in fact a breakup. Connecting the dots there. So after Olivia released her debut song, fans were quick to notice that some of the lyrics could have been aimed at her breakup. Now, in a letter to her fans, Olivia did reveal that she wrote the songs six months ago after, quote, crying to Gracie Abrams' songs in my car for an hour, lol. She told fans that the song really captures how she was feeling at the time and how songwriting can really help you talk about your feelings and make it less scary, which is like so true. I guess I should start writing some music, huh? You know how good I am at singing. Like, me, 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 me. I could be the next Olivia Rodrigo. What's the opposite of driver's license? Passport? So speaking of driver's license, the title of the song alone kind of gave away a clue that we could prove that the song is about Joshua, considering he basically kind of taught Olivia how to drive. She talked about her first time being behind the wheel, being a moment with Joshua after finding out a song they wrote would be featured in their show. Another clue that a lot of fans have been pointing out is the lyric that said, quote, I guess you didn't mean what you wrote in that song about me, which a lot of people are thinking is referring to Joshua's song, Anyone Else, which hints that one of his ex-girlfriends moved on with another guy. I don't think Olivia has moved on to another guy. Case not close on that one. Not only are fans convinced that the song is shading Joshua, but also seems to bring up his new rumored girlfriend, Sabrina Carpenter. This is where Sabrina enters stage left. I always do this the wrong way. So Joshua and Sabrina have basically been reportedly dating after he and Olivia broke up. And in November, Joshua and Sabrina posted a TikTok together dressed up as Shark Boy and Lava Girl. So as you can tell, they've been spending some time together, making TikToks together. When you make TikToks together, Kyle? You stay together. Another lyric in the song that had fans going crazy was the lyric quote, and you're probably with that blonde girl who always made me doubt. She's so much older than me, she's everything I'm insecure about. Sabrina is blonde, and she's four years older than Olivia. All the signs are pointing to <laughs> that all these fan theories are true. And fans even pointed out that Olivia's original lyrics were brunette girl in an earlier version that she shared on Instagram, but changed it to blonde girl after learning about Sabrina and Josh's relationship. Whew. Some eagle-eyed fans, let me tell you. Joshua actually did like a photo of the song's cover art a few days before it was released, and he posted about the song on his Instagram story, but she reposted a lot of her friends and co-stars onto her story instead. Interesting, he was not included. Now, I need to know what you guys think. Are you guys believing all these fan theories? Like, I just need to know your guys' two cents as well. Let me know down in the comments below. On to the next story. Okay, so I kind of have some bad news. Netflix actually just announced the ending of two of our favorite movies, To All the Boys I've Loved Before and The Kissing Booth. The franchises are ending, Kyle. No! 
So both of the popular Yana Doll franchises will have their third and final movies airing sometime in 2021. I'm hoping something will come out of this, maybe a spin-off, a TV show, something to keep these alive. I need them in my life. Well, the wait for these movies isn't over just yet. Netflix just dropped some big, big clips in a trailer that will give us some clues as to what we can expect coming up for our favorite couples. The love triangles. The love triangles are gonna come to an end. Why haven't I thought about this part yet? I mean, we have Taylor Zuccar Perez who plays Marco, Joey Keane who plays Elle, and we have Jacob Lordy who plays Noah. What's gonna happen there? We have Lara Jean, Peter Kaninsky, and John Ambrose. What's gonna happen there too? All these love triangles, oh my gosh. I don't know if my heart can take this in 2021. So in the teaser slash trailer, spoiler alert ahead if you haven't seen them yet, but for the Kissing the Three, it looks like Elle and Noah are going to make the most of their summer together, and there's even gonna be a huge pool party that we only wish we were invited to. Meanwhile, into All the Boys Three, Always and Forever, our favorite boyfriend, Peter Kavinsky, is seen going down on one knee while out with Lara Jean at the diner where it all started for them. Is he proposing? Oh my gosh, I have chills right now. To end the To All The Boys franchise with a proposal, a wedding, love to see it. I'm, a girl can dream, right? We're just gonna have to wait and see because there has not been any official release dates yet for both of these films. And then, you know, until then, I guess we'll just have to keep catching up and rewatching both of these movies. Wait, didn't Joey say for Kissing the Three that it's gonna be released in the early 2021? Am I just making this up and I just want it to happen? Let's hope. <laughs> Coming at you with the Kelsey cam because of course, right after I talked about the kissing booth and to all the boys, of course, to all the boys, always and forever, the third and final movie of the franchise, the trailer for it <laughs> dropped the day after I talked about it, of course. So we got to see Peter Kaminsky and Lara Jean again, and I'm so happy they're coming to our screens. And we got to see a promposal, but really I thought it was gonna be a proposal, like an actual proposal. I got really excited, but then it was just a promposal, and I was like, I can breathe. There's also some relationship drama, like which school are they gonna choose? Are they gonna go to the same school? Are they gonna do long distance? So much to uncover. I'm so excited. It's coming out February 12th, only on Netflix, and you know I'm gonna be watching, are you? Last story of the day, our girl Zendaya made the cover of GQ and I was so here for all of the tea that was spilled. Okay, so from seeing Zendaya to star in Disney Channel's Casey Undercover and Marvel's Spider-Man to watching her become the youngest woman to win an Emmy and an outstanding lead actress in a drama series, fans have continued to watch Zendaya dominate the film and TV space. I feel like I'm about to give her an award right now. Oh, I wish. Okay, so my question is, when did you first take notice of Zendaya? Was it because of Disney Channel when she was in KC Undercover? Okay, so although Zendaya has gone to do much bigger things since, her Disney days are never too far from her mind. Zendaya actually revealed in her interview that she and Euphoria creator Sam Levinson were thinking of projects they could work on together during the early days of quarantine and KC Undercover came up. I feel like all of our Disney hearts are throbbing right now. Like, we want this, Zendaya, come on. According to Zendaya, Sam pitched a grown-up version of KC with a horror movie edge. She said, quote, he's like, what if we did something almost like a horror movie where you've lost it because you still think you're on Casey Undercover? Could you imagine if that actually happened? Well, Zendaya was not actually into the idea of a revisit, but the project they discussed actually eventually turned into their forthcoming Netflix movie, Malcolm and Marie, which also looks amazing. I don't know if you saw the trailer, but it looks unreal. Zendaya also had a really hard time channeling her emotions when she moved from Disney Channel to Euphoria. In her GQ cover story, Sam Levinson shared that she struggled with being vulnerable. In the interview with GQ, Zendaya opened up about overcoming her childhood shyness. Who would have thought Zendaya would have been shy? I never would have thought that. But as her star continued to rise, you know, she found herself in more social situations. She said, quote, in this industry, I had to learn how to do small talk and stuff because I guess it would kind of come off cold to people because I didn't really know how to start conversation. I remember my stylist was like, you come off kind of cold. People think you're mean because you don't talk. When really, I just was too nervous. Oh my God, Zendaya, talk to me. I'll talk to you forever. <laughs> but as time went on, Zendaya obviously has become more comfortable with speaking out. And I seriously still can't believe this. I thought this was such a fun story because I could never see Zendaya being shy. But I don't know, I'm just so talkative. I would just talk her ear off and she would just be like, okay, Kelsey, shut up now. <laughs> 
which I probably should. <laughs> so thank you all so much for watching another episode of Cottable Kelsey. Let me know down in the comments below who I should talk about next week. Make sure to subscribe to the Awesomeness TV Daily Report channel. We're almost at 100k subscribers, so if you haven't subscribed yet, click that subscribe button now. Make sure to follow us at Awesomeness TV on Instagram for more and at Cottable Kelsey for more, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye! Happy birthday!